Hi there. Speaking about parents, grandparents, grand, 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 grandparents, go to the ancestry, correct? So when you speak about our children, children, grandchildren, grand, 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 grandchildren, then we're gonna get to progeny. So what is our position? Where is our position? Seems like we are in a vice between two. Ancestry, progeny. What is our relationship with our ancestry? Our grand, grand, grandparents. It seems through the pages of history, when we speak about grand grandparents, I'm going back, way back. It seems like we have something to do with them, of course. You know. So the way they were behaving could be knowledge, could be customs, traditions, customs, etc. Coming from them to us, and then we transmit this to our children and grandchildren and keeps going. You know, we can't help it. I mean, we cannot hide it at the same time. Sometimes, you know, there are certain things are good about our grandparents. There are certain things are not good. Does that mean that we have to keep, to conserve, you know, you know traditions, etc.? It's nice to follow that. It's good. But rigidity sometimes doesn't allow you to move. Rigidity, you understand what I'm saying? Flexibility is better. Today we we are influenced uh, by world modernism, all this technology, and we see it as it is flexible. We see the flexibility and see the changes in this world, external world. It seems to us it's flexibility. Is it true that the world we live in is flexible. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna give a small example. Look at the kids, for instance, when they play. Bring kids from different background, big different culture, uh, cultural background, religious background. Let them play together. Are they gonna find difficulties? Small kids, huh? not yet. They haven't been given any kind of name or identity yet. So, you can find them, they play. They play, there is nothing that is interrupting them. This is nothing comes as an obstacle, they play. And uh, by the time they start growing up, they're gonna find some kind of like uh, backing up. You know, M me, you, you know what I'm saying? So, why they don't find difficulties? Why? What kind of identity do they have? Uh, I don't know what the identity, but I think I heard about a word that called innocence. Yeah, what is innocence? It's innocence. Come on, you're asking me this question? Yeah, innocence, I'm just one. I, I, I don't know what's the word, you know. Innocence means, uh, means water. Beg your pardon? Yeah, that means water. Water, yes. That means transparency. That means limpidity. Yeah, what does that mean? Water doesn't have a color and it doesn't have a form. Its form and its color are from the container. Is that correct? Wherever you put the water, the water is the life of life. You know, it's the life. It is infiltrated everywhere. It's like we breathe, the oxygen is everywhere. It doesn't have a nationality. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have a polarization. Hey, water, you, you come from... No, there's no such a thing. That's the innocence. Innocence meaning innocent, acting without kind of like the intuition that talks, the intuition that behaves. So, it's not wrong to think about our background, about our customs, traditions and customs, etc., it's not bad to be like that, but to should think we should be well aware of what is good, what is bad. I mentioned earlier, I say we see the technology, we see the flexibility in the world. Does this flexibility, this state of metamorphism, is it in the external world that we see or is it in our own psychic world? 
should just pay attention to this. It seems like we are transporting something from way back and giving it to our kids. Knowledge, we are transporters of knowledge. Now, there is something we have to distinguish between the two. Are you a knowledgeable person or you are a transporter of knowledge? Are you an intellectual or you are a transporter of intellectualism? Etc. So, a transporter doesn't have... It's the same thing with civilization. You say you are a transporter of civilization, which is the case of our world today. You know what I'm saying? So, and a civilized person is different. Doesn't, we're not excluding the other civilized people, of course, individuals. But when you speak about civilization, that's something you have to really think, looking for that I and put the point on it. You know, that's the same in French. You say, mettre les points sur les i, that means putting the I on the I. I mean, the point on the I, that's something you have to be, uh, you have to be aware of it. Uh, now, we're going to lean a little bit and we're going to give an example, okay, sort of like metaphor, to explain something abstract. I'm going to give an example, a concrete example. Consider yourself, you are standing today for people, those who go to the gym to practice. You know, you pick up a free weight. You pick up a free weight to exercise. You know, to exercise your biceps, deltoid, pectorals, etc. So you exercise. You go to the gym to exercise. So consider yourself, you are... Uh, in a space shuttle out of space. In other words, far from gravity. There is zero gravity. There's nothing attracting you down. Will you be able to exercise? I don't understand your question, sir. There is no gravity. You get my point? There is no gravity. You hold the, the free weight, the same thing you hold it in a gym. You go to the space shuttle there where there is zero gravity. You enter it or you are in space. Will you be able to exercise? No. Why? Because there is no gravity. Because you cannot stand. You leave the word, the weight, the free weight, the free weight will flow. You are flowing yourself. You got my point? Very good. Another example, you are in a deep swimming pool. You swim. Deep, deep swimming pool where your feet do not touch the ground. We're going to give you another free way to ask you to exercise. Will you be able to exercise? No. Why? Because you don't have a platform. There is no gravity. You have to stand on a platform. This is where your center of gravity is standing there. You can exercise. So you have the action. You have the, the free weight is in your hand. And then you have the rebound of the action going to your arm, chest, going to your legs, and then... That's the gravity. Okay, so here you can understand. Now, we are giving a concrete example. Again, a concrete example. Now, the intention. The intention, what does it mean, the intention? Uh, I don't know, intention, objective, something to do so. See, in our world, we don't pay close attention, except in some cultures and some other cultures, religion, etc. They focus a lot on this and pay attention. It could be before the action, it could be at the same time of your actions. We don't pay attention to this. The intention, it's like two people, they're going to exercise. They're going to do the same action. You got my point? They differ tremendously from each other just because of the intention. This person goes to school to finish quickly, to study, to have a diploma, something, you get my point. This is, he go, they go, both of them. This person is going for knowledge, whatever that, uh, you know, a trip or voyage will take him, that's fine. This person is creating a sort of like a stagnation because his intention was exactly to go to get that particular diploma and then to work with it. So he already created a limit. You know, when we study the limits, you know, when we study the limits in math, we put the, you know, we put the thing is like uh, the domain of definition. We put it from zero to 10, etc. So this person doesn't have a limit. I mean, this person created the limit for himself. This person, no. 
this person consumes his energy. This person, his energy is autogenic. It keeps, you know, it's a self-developed. It's like a bootstrap. That's how we call it. It gets developed along his journey. So pay attention. The intention is very important. Now, this person, for example, I'm going to give another example, <clears throat> speaking about uh, what we see today. You see, uh, we celebrate certain things and we don't pay attention to. Okay, so we're speaking about, and just again, do not stay or stick to this. Because the proverb says, I show him the moon, he's looking at my finger. I want you to look at the moon, not at my finger. Okay, thanks. So anyway, Mother's Day. We hear a lot about Mother's Day. Because the word is westernized. A long time ago. So a Mother's Day. Okay. So there is a day. It's after tomorrow. It's an example. Okay, we're going to go out and we buy something for our mothers and things and a gift and sing back to Israel. This person, <clears throat> he is thinking at one moment. Thinking what the parents, the value of the parents, what are our ancestors, what are our parents, what are the parents in this life, what I owe them. Without them, I don't exist. I'll be, okay. If I don't think this way, I'm going to be product. I'm going to be manufactured product. That's all. It's a logistics. That's all. <laughs> Supply chain strategy. It's not a progeny. So if you think about the parents, you know what I'm saying? Then there is an intention that pops up to the surface of the conscience how much I owe them. I'm going to buy, you know, like there's an organza di Vinci, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, you know what I'm saying? Pierre Cardin for my mom. And I'm going to buy it and go, mom. Could be another day, tomorrow or after tomorrow. So this person, his action, his intention, his time are his. They belong to him. You get my point? They were spawned from the same example I gave when you are standing with the center of gravity. On those feet you are standing, you did the action that is yours. You got my point? So this person. The other one, <clears throat> it's the routine. It's the habit. The routine doesn't produce anything. You are just following the flow. See the flow of the traffic, you can't avoid it. It's the same thing, the flow of your emotions. They flow with the habits, routinely. Somehow, we were given 365 days a year under the solar calendar to express our emotions. Somehow, there is only one day. Look at this. We eliminated 364 days. Father's Day, Mother's Day, or oh, the day for the love. Yeah, somehow I have another 354 maybe-ish under this, uh, the, the, the lunar calendar. So I ignored all of this, and I'm waiting for one day. And I go and I do something like this. Again, I gave just an example. You know, so you're talking about something... Uh, kind of these moral values and this kind of you know we live in a production money this is not gonna bring me money you know what I'm saying You're talking about uh, love generosity and this you know that's not gonna bring money yeah really actually this is what is neglected from our grandparents this is what is neglected by us from our grandparents because this modern life we are driven we are driven. When we say driven, we don't have force on our own psychic forces. Getting back to our example, you see, you're going to work at work. We neglect these intentions. Generosity, affection, being considered, being punctual, and etc., we recapitulate all of this love. We neglect that. We do it without conscious awareness, meaning as an automaton. Automaton in psychology is the person who is acting or behaving without conscious awareness. We don't mean he don't have conscious. That's kind of an insult. No, a person is, doesn't have. Even that's the routine. But do you see what we are suffering in our world today? 
in our modernism, we don't infiltrate those kind of moral values. This is the soul of the action. You are feeding the action. You get my point? You are feeding it with generosity, affection, uh, tenderness, a lot of vocabularies. I'm not aware of all of them, you know what I'm saying? That action itself, it becomes lively. It is as if you are resurrecting something within you, and then you feel it. This is what is neglected from our ancestry. Now, the difference between this person whose intention is his spawned from his time, from his own thoughts to the, to the surface of his conscience, and the second one whose intention is a routine. Do you know what this one is doing? This one is, uh, is generous too, isn't he? No. This person is generous. This person is carrying an emotion of generosity. This person is affectionate. This person is carrying an emotion of affection. This person is considerate. This person is carrying an, an emotion of uh, consideration. This person is a lover. Yo, this person is carrying love. Now, oh, oh, come on, man, that's ridiculous. What's the difference? The difference is like you are carrying vitamins extrinsically. They are vitamins, but you haven't absorbed them. An emotion of love, an emotion of love, when it is extrinsic, you can understand, that is resulted or affection, generosity, compassion, take all of these examples, look at them in a dictionary, I'm not that, uh, you know, good at synonyms or whatever, words. If they are intrinsic, here they are extrinsic from the me, from the I. This person is carrying them as a burden. That's why you hear people, they feel oblivious. I feel being pushed off. I feel like I'm not for myself. I feel like, I don't understand. I have a property, but something is not mine. What is that? That's what it is. Do you get my point? That's what it is. This person, this one has a storage, a stock of emotions. This person, no, they dissolve, they be part of his personality. So this is the difference. Uh, now, this is one point, okay? Another point is what is changing in life. You know, the changes of life, the state of metamorphism in life. It differs from one person to another. It differs from one age to another. If you think about today, we are proud of some kind of like ancestry. That's beautiful. That's fine. It doesn't mean it has to be the same name. My name is Johnny Be Good. It has to be Johnny Be Good, Johnny Rainbow, Johnny Cochrane. It's guess what the Johnny is. Yeah, well, look, it could be from another name. It has nothing to do. That's how you absorb from other people. From the world, you are universal, as I gave the example of a little baby in the beginning. You know, that's a part of you, if you know how to... It's not my ancestor, they are not my ancestors, and I have nothing to do with them. You know, what you are doing to yourself, your conscience, primordially, it was a universal cosmic consciousness. You are creating boundaries for yourself, and you find difficulties. You get my point? You are creating boundaries. There is no such a thing a person is creating when it is in the external world, this objective world. We can see the limits, the barriers, the frontiers, and we can eliminate them. But those frontiers within the state of consciousness, you cannot see them. It's a labyrinth, a maze. You live inside and you wonder why you find difficulties. Uh, there is a beautiful story from, uh, what's his name? Morihei Ueshiba is the founder of Aikido. Everybody knows Aikido, philosophy of Aikido. It's a sports, martial arts, etc. Uh, in, uh, I think in the 50s, well, he died in 1969, but in the 50s, there was uh, some people who came from Europe, 
you know, they came from Europe, a photographer. They wanted to like, to have to have an interview with him, so he was doing some demonstrations. So the photographer missed one action, and then the the the, the master or oh, sensei they say, please can you? He kept going with other demonstrations. You know, we have like kata, you know. Drew Kimite, but he was in front of an adverse, an opponent, but he was making demonstra demonstrations. And the guy missed one action that he loved. He kept repeating, oh, master, he's like, oh, sensei, can you repeat that? No, 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 that action. He heard him, but he kept going. So he kept going. And then at the end, he said, aren't you a photographer? He said, yes, but the first action I liked, he said, the actions in life are never repeated. You should seize that. He mentioned the state of metamorphism in life. Don't attribute it the one that is before is the same like now. The world is offering you beauties every minute. In meta, you know, in uh, what do you call it, quantum mechanic today, quantum physics mechanic. They show you that this book that you have in front of you, the particles right now, and the particles before they are different. He said, aren't you a photographer? That was a very, look the way they teach. This is from uh, the book, uh, what do you call, uh, Aikido and the Harmony of Nature. It's such a beautiful book. It's, I think it's page 181. So this is what he said to me. He said, you should see. So now, do not transport, you speak about rigidity into your son. You know, you have a son, our ancestors, that's a beautiful, that's fine. But they have their own intention. You have your own. And your own intention is your own intention at the, memor at the same time of your own moment. That is yours. You are history. You are history that's going to go way back. And bring the history, you know, that sort of like reenactment. It's not reenactment to replicate the image. It's just to have it, but you purify. So you deal with the world. Um, I think it's better to stop here and not to burden you with all the kind of this information. But I hope this video is a kind of like something positive. We can learn from it. And uh, we hope we can see each other. Have a pleasant day. I'll talk to you soon.